Echo Block that we're going to be installing on the 2015 Subaru XV Crosstrek. Goes right here underneath the mass airflow sensor. There's two screws on the MEF sensor to uh, remove. And then w these will be replaced with longer coarse threaded screws that will go through the uh, sensor bracket, the echo block, and into the intake manifold. The uh, installation is pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, these two screws pull the sensor out. Now there's a clip along the side of the wiring harness. Unclip it makes it easier to uh, move it out of the way, gives it more room, and it'll actually have to be unclipped with the uh, new sensor, uh, the, or the echo block installed with the sensor, because it lifts it a little bit higher up. So just get that out of the way. Get the echo block. As you can see, it'll fit right there. Orientation one way, and then there's a groove on the bottom of the block that an O-ring will go into. You have to get that in place. It's also part of the kit. Uh, I saw in some other videos where I showed that groove and this O-ring that's in this bag, but uh, that just goes fits nice and neatly in the uh, groove on the echo block. And then on the sensor, there's an O-ring at the t top of the sensor that when it goes down in it'll uh, have a nice tight uh, fit. You see here I'm getting that uh, echo block put on the sensor itself and it's a tight fit you gotta be careful as you put it on that that o-ring doesn't get uh, crimped, cut, or twisted, split in there uh, you want to have it in in place, nice tight seal. You can uh, uh, lube it up a little bit. Don't put something that's going to damage the sensor. I just used water spit just to kind of make it a little bit slippier. Although it was a very cold day, but just be careful as you put it on. Once you get it in, make sure the uh, the brackets lined up with the uh, holes on the block. And it goes right there. Again, there's the uh, ho you know, the harness, but uh, put it in and two longer screws. I had dropped one of the screws and had to go searching for it. But uh, if you don't drop the screws, this whole install should only take about five to ten minutes. I ended up, uh, like I said, dropping the screw and had to go searching for it, but uh, getting those O-rings in place, um, on, on taking out the screws, putting in the uh, block, and putting it back together is really a quick, easy job. It's probably one of the easiest installs I've ever done. Probably actually easier than doing the uh, air filter. But what this does, it lifts the uh, sensor up out of the airflow, directly out of the airflow. It still has part of the sensor in the airflow there, but uh, it's supposed to improve performance and gas mileage as well as uh, reduce emissions. Now I don't have to do emissions testing where I live, but um, we'll see how it does with the gas mileage. I did notice a little bit of changes uh, in with the gas mileage. It seems to be a little bit smoother and uh, over the trip, but once we're in the vehicle, which as I finish up here, I'm getting it all tightened up, snugged up. I'm going to get in the vehicle, and I'll start it up, just make sure I don't throw a coat or anything, which it didn't. And now having, at this point, after uh, this install, I've put on 500 and some miles and have not had any issues or any uh, coats. We've owned this uh, Subaru for now just two years. Uh, pretty much by the at the time I was doing this, we had bought it two years ago, uh, yeah, almost exactly. And uh, it was used with about twenty six thousand, twenty eight thousand somewhere around there. And we've got fifty five thousand seven thirty on it now. Now one hundred forty seven miles on the trip was this around 
Spokane City Driving at this point, which as I scroll through the uh, options here, we'll see the current gas mileage as the car was reporting was 23.7 miles to the gallon. Now on the trip home from Spokane back to Mountain Home, Idaho, the uh, car did one miles to the gallon worse on that uh, first the fill up on the longest part of the trip. Now that also was uh, worse than the previous trip this vehicle had done on that same route, but the weather was completely different. The vehicle was probably holding 350 pounds more on this trip than it did on the previous trip. So those are factors that are going to go in this. It was, this is winter time. We had um, the battery died we had a couple stops for restroom breaks and then when we stopped and got dinner in Boise where we ended up letting the car idle so it idled for a long period of time uh, just not moving so that affected the overall gas mileage but I think for the trip and everything you get one mile gallon worse which 28.7 miles to the gallon is actually I thought pretty good for this highway on this in this vehicle with the weight it was carrying now since we've been home uh, we've been tracking mileage, but I don't know how the, the exact yet. But thanks for watching.